Hey people, yo, what's going on? Hope you are and in good health. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please like, share, subscribe. Please consider joining channel sports or Patreon link in the description. Okay, people, right now we're going to check out some traits on masculinity. Obviously, masculinity is one of those important things right now in society which are affecting men in particular. Now, we've got to make sure that we can get this masculinity thing kind of like, you know, all worked out. Might not be, you know, it might take a while, but it's something that can really push men forward so that they can actually achieve their potential and be all that they can be. Okay, so we're on helpprofessor.com. So if you take a look here, we're looking at 15 masculinity examples, right? So you can see here in this diagram, masculinity refers to stereotypical cultural characteristics of men. It's interesting they've used the word stereotypical there. So you can see here, you've got the feminine stereotypes and you've got the masculine stereotypes. So let's take a look. So for feminine, you've got things like empathy, nurturer, emotionality, kindness, pa passive, submissive. And then on the other side, you've got masculine stereotypes, right? So stoicism, right? You know, people like Andrew Tate talk about stoicism. You've got provider, you've got logical strength, active, domineering. Right, you know, you've had famous people like Marcus Aurelius, you know, one of the ancient emperors of Rome, right? He, he wrote a book, you know, called The Meditations and he talked about Stoicism. Other famous kind of ancient Greeks and philosophers of that time have talked about Stoicism, right? And that's one of the masculine stereotypes, right? So you can see, like for like a comparison there in terms of what this article talks about masculine stereotypes and also feminine stereotypes now if we take it down a little bit let's delve into this a bit further so it says here masculinity refers to cultural ideas about the physical and behavioral attributes of idealized men men learn to embody masculine traits through gender socialization and you know particularly at a young age also then it goes on to talk about you know, most social scientists believe masculinity is a social construct, right? Meaning these ideals are imposed by society and culture, right? And as a result of this, different cultures have different ideas about what they think might be, you know, hegemonic masculinity and what that may look like in particular. Okay. So now more than you know, often or not, we do hear things like, terminology such as toxic masculinity and you know that critiques particular forms of masculinity as you know that things that might be misogynistic again what Andrew Tate's been accused of and other people as well so let's take a look at masculinity in terms of some examples so you've got here now the state typical feminine versus masculine traits according to this article so again you've got the traditional patriarchal masculinity and then the same for the femininity. So for the male masculinity, you've got stoicism, provider, logic, strength, active, domineering, preoccupied with power, independent, public sphere, quiet, analytical, blunt, bold, leader, rugged. On the other side, for the femininity, you've got empathy, nurturer, emotionality, kindness, passive, submissive, preoccupied with looks, dependent, right domestic severe talkative creative tactful shy follower and refined so you can see you know a few different traits there in terms of femininity versus the other side masculinity side by side right let's take a look further down what does it go into then it talks about traditional masculinity examples you must be muscular we have talked about this before in the previous videos, it's testosterone. So you're looking at things like basically, like I said, accountability, going to the gym, getting fit. I think from my experience, everything starts with being fit, healthy and strong, right? So if you want to be a good entrepreneur, business person, someone who succeeds, you know, you might be an athlete, you might be, you know, even going to, you know, education, uh, or you could be, you know, running your own business, or you could just be working for someone. Just generally speaking, You've got to have your health in line and it's got to be optimal, right? I've unfortunately in the past not, you know, been looking at that 
focusing on that and it's affected me. That's why now, you know, I'm for, you know, laser focus, laser beam focus, trying to make sure that I'm looking after my health. So that, that starts with getting in the gym, training, pumping iron, you know, lifting weights, starting to build that testosterone, get those dopamine hits and actually getting in there and building your muscular physique, right? So that's what basically this example is talking about. The leaner, the better, ripped muscles are the best. Muscle means strength, and strength is the expectation for idea, idealized men, right? And it's the thing, you know, when you walk into a room, you see somebody who's muscular, who's slim, who's got a good physique on them, maybe the V-shape, and you can see their biceps and whatnot. They've got a suit on, maybe they're dressed like a gentleman, and the suit really fits well. And then you can see, yeah, this person looks after themselves. They're much more likely to take them seriously, right? Compared to someone who comes in, belly hanging down, you know, triple chin, and someone just looks like they're out of they can't breathe properly because they've climbed one stair, a flight of stairs kind of thing, right? So that's what a lot of people will actually look at you and say, yeah, look, they will stereotype you. Unfortunately, we might not think it, but it does happen in the human space. You know, when you're going for an interview, new job, you know, when you're trying to close a deal, people will look at you, first impression will count. So the first thing you're going to start is getting fit, getting muscular, right, getting vascular, losing weight, getting healthy, getting fit, getting strong, right, and building that body. That's where it's going to start from. That's your foundation, right? So it says here, this comes from the idea that men are hunters and gatherers as well as the tribe's defenders. The more muscular you are, the more likely you will succeed in the hunt and the fight to defend the women, right? So it's ancient kind of, you know, methodologies, ideas, and, you know, human history in terms of the previous life, in terms of, you know, thousands of years ago, how people lived, actually still, you know, has an impact today. Women were relegated to stay in the community or village as they had to be the carers, basically. Today, it has a man in the deep psyche of human beings, so psychologically, like I just said. So, you know, men are muscular, and even though we live in a different kind of world, where intelligence is just as valid as brute force, you know, mus muscle power is something to think about. And this muscular ideal is why many men go to the gym to develop their muscles, increase testosterone, pump iron, and, you know, that can also help potentially in finding a partner, a wife, a husband whatever it might be. Okay, so, right, you must be a fighter. So he is talking about men expected ready to be fight. Well, you never know. You might be walking down the street, like, for example, in London. Someone might try attacking you, stealing your watch or stealing your wife's, you know, Louis Vuitton handbag or whatever it is. And you might have to defend, you know, yourself or your family. And even though you might not think it might not happen, you never know. But I, I've been in a lot of these situations where I've had to defend myself, where I've, you know, got into trouble and so on. And that's a story for another time. But these things can happen, right? Obviously, we, want, we don't want to promote violence. We want to stay away from violence. And we want to, you know, be taking it easy and so on. But we also need to be able to defend ourselves just in case things happen, right? And that's where you need to be trained. So you need to do some sort of martial arts because it helps promote discipline, good health, good body physique, and also stoicism and patience potentially, right? For example, boxing, karate, right? So if you do get into trouble or your family member's in trouble or someone else is in trouble, at least you can defend yourself. And this looks back at like in the past when invaders used to come in to attack, take the women, take all the gold, all the precious stuff, the men would be expected to fight and defend. And I think most men do make up uh, numbers in the armies all around the world. Although there are women who are part of the army these days. In terms of the front line, most people on the front line of the battle lines are men. Okay. And as being assertive, right? Assertive and firm. That's one of the masculine kind of ideas that we have in terms of when we think about masculinity and men, that a man has to be assertive and firm. Having higher levels of testosterone can also push that assertiveness, you know, level forward. Because sometimes when you're not healthy, when you're not fit, when you haven't got self-confidence, self-esteem, you become docile, you let people walk all over you, maybe even bully you, right? So you need to have, you know, get that in check, make sure you're potentially or partially assertive so you can look after yourself and be firm when you make decisions. So it says here, men are expected to be assertive even to the point of aggression, right? Obviously that has to be checked and controlled, right? They must insist on what they want and not easily be swayed like the weather. Yes, so obviously if you make a decision, you're 
you know, the assertiveness LMO will help do that and then push that forward in terms of leadership as well. Assertiveness is a behavior of a leader. Historically, cultures have placed men in leadership roles and dismissed women's intelligence and skill. Obviously, in contemporary society, we have lots of women who are presidents and in high influential positions, they're very intelligent and so on. But we're talking here, historically, most men were the leaders and kings and so on, right? A man who fails to be assertive, you know, in terms of leadership roles may be seen as feminine, right? And here, like the previous examples, we can see there's a narrative forming where strong, powerful, aggressive and active traits are assigned to men, while the weak and feeble traits are assigned to women. Of course, this gender stereotype isn't quite accurate as mythology makes it out to be. Like I said, sometimes these things can cross over in terms of the traits. You get women who are aggressive. Nowadays, there's a lot more women who are more masculine, actually, than men. For example, they're out to work, they're the breadwinners, they make money, they're more independent, they can look after themselves. They don't need men, so to speak, uh, in this kind of world. Obviously, feminism has rose to the forefront as well. Whether you agree with it or not, there's various elements around that in terms of the masculine elements as well. Okay, people, so we have had a look briefly at different types of masculinity, some of the stereotypes associated with feminine and masculine ideals. Obviously, it's not perfect. You can do your own research and find out more about this type of stuff. But remember, please do like, share, subscribe. Please consider joining the channel. It costs less than a cup of coffee, a few dollars. You can click the join button on the YouTube. And you can also support us on Patreon, link in description. But do remember to subscribe, click the notification bell so you get the latest videos to help you kind of like navigate this world in terms of a world where men are lost, right? You need to find that path where we can help each other in brotherhood and also succeed in life, whether it's business, entrepreneurship, getting fit, getting lean, getting hench, right? Join me on this journey. Let's keep it, each other accountable. Okay, people, let's get out there and make some guala and let's do this. Catch you in the next one.